quickly now we'll look at the two men who are entrusted with the starting pitching assignment here to begin the new year. And now the starting lineup for the visiting Baltimore Orioles. Mark what do you have on this lineup as they go for their first win. Maddie, this lineup is built on one thing. Their best tool is the fact that they have amazing speed up and down the lineup. I don't I don't even think the third base coach gives a steal sign. I think a lot of these guys have the green light. So be on the lookout for that today. James Paxton gets the call to pitch here on opening day in front of the hometown crowd. What do we need to know here Danny. Boy there's lots to like about this lefty James Paxton big arm from the left side he reminds me a lot of Andy Pettit the only thing he throws about four or five miles harder than Pettit Paxton occasionally 97 to 98 miles an hour good hard overhand curveball his changeup is getting better the more he uses it this is one of the game's premier left handed strikeout pitchers all right here's how the Bronx Bombers are going to set up defensively today. And let's take a look at outfielder Aaron Hicks. Hey, some guys figure it out at 21. Some guys figure it out at 30. Some guys never figure it out. Aaron Hicks is one of those guys who has come into his own. He's dynamic on both sides of the play from an offensive standpoint and has an absolute cannon in the outfield to go along with great range. Two balls and a strike to the Orioles leadoff hitter. And a little off to begin the afternoon as it's to three and one now. Full count to Alcides Escobar. Well, that's a tough pitch to take right there, right down the middle. But I think that happens when you're facing a good pitcher like this guy. The last thing you're expecting is one right down the pipe. And unfortunately, he let that one go. And he'd like to have that pitch back to take a good swing at that one. And that misses ball four. So a good battle to begin the ball game today, but the leadoff man will reach first anyway. So coming to the plate, Joey Rickard. He'll get to take his first cuts here. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Paxton he's the kind of pitcher that a lot of pitching coaches and managers really appreciate and that he rarely issues the free pass he's a strike thrower. Yeah Matty V and I think every pitching coach and every manager loves to have a guy like this on his staff he won't beat himself he'll make you put the ball in play and he's not afraid to get his defense allowed he's a pitch to contact guy and that's one of the keys why he's been able to be such a good pitcher at this level time to check our umpires in this one behind the plate is Freddie Ferguson you know this is one of the guys behind the dish Freddie Ferguson Dan that the rookies are going to have a tough time with. If you've played in the league for a little bit, you understand that he's got his own zone. Uh, you touched on it, d -Roy. I think he rewards the veteran players, not only pitchers, but position players. He makes the younger players, he makes them earn their keep. Nice job on the mound to bounce back from the leadoff walk. Those are usually pretty costly, but that won't be the case this time after the two ball. Stepping in now, Jonathan VR. And he looks oh, at ball it. four ball now. Two. So he's aboard, and you always have to worry about the threat of the steal when he's on base. Some guys take a little time to find the zone, but with the second walk of the first inning, it might be a little more than just settling in here. Not sure how long of a leash they'll give him, but they're not going to let him walk the world out there. Now at the plate, Mark Trumbo, man at first after the two out walk. He's going, he's going. One. And there he goes towards second. Pitch inside. The throw is going to be far too late. That's a stolen base. Good steal of second there. And that really sets up the middle of this order to drive in a run and break this scoreless ball game. Always great if you can score first early in the game. VR at second with two down. Is put in play to the right side of the infield. 
And the stolen base winds up as a moot point as the inning is over. A couple of walks, but no damage. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. With that, it's time to check out the starting lineup for the hometown Yankees. Dero, what do you got on this lineup in the series opener? Well, Matt, when we drove over to the ballpark today, we were expecting some offensive firepower, especially in this yard. It's a hitter's yard, but that could sometimes work against them. I'm interested to see what lineup stays within themselves and executes and manufactures to get this W. Dylan Bundy is on the mound for the season opener on the road in this one. Dan Fleezak, what do you got? This guy had a year you'd love to forget last year. Look at that ERA, awfully ugly. We'll see if he can rebound and pitch much better. And if he doesn't, his spot in the rotation could be in jeopardy. It'll be awfully important that he gets off to a good start in this one. All right, let's take a look at the defensive alignment for the Orioles. And I want to talk about shortstop Alcides Escobar. This guy's a premium defender. He's been that way his whole career. A former World Series champion. They have ability to go up the middle and to the backhand with a strong arm. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. The 3-1. Lifted in the air out towards left center. Calling for it, Mancini, one out. 